competition against the best. Someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. Everybody wants to win. You know? It's not that you want to see someone lose, you want to win. They're the best at what they do, and you want to beat the best. Oh, yeah. That is what fishing's all about. <laughs> Round two, we, we were sort of pretty excited today. Um, we knew we still had to do well. There's only one point in it at the moment, so we had to get the job done. We got uh, some really bad luck yesterday, but um, yeah. it turned into good luck. <laughs> That's a bit of a shock, to be really honest. The difference today, going into it, we've got that little bit of confidence now. We've had our settling process. So uh, now we'll, we'll just go out there and fish and enjoy it. I didn't really feel pressure yesterday, but I did a little bit, you know, because we did have a tough day yesterday. Oh, he's gone. We had a good sleep, we got cracked. <laughs> so, um, should be good. You ready? Say when. When. and points guidelines for Yungala Dam. Anglers will fish a four hour limit. Their bag will be determined by their four longest fish. A legal fish must be caught to register a point. A bonus point will be awarded to the team that catches the longest fish per round. An additional bonus point will be awarded to the team that catches the longest barrow per round. So this morning we head off. Um we went up to the back of the dam at a spot called Homestead Bay. Pulled up to the first tree with bird's nest in it and Mark, I gave Mark that, that first cast and he got a fish pretty quick and that was exactly what we needed to start the day. There he is. You're right, he's out, he's out, he's out. He's out clear. Oh, he's on something. That's around something. He's trying to break me. He's out there soon. Here you go. Oh, that's the one we needed. That was our game plan, was to definitely go and get the big fish first. Okay. Getting that big fish locked in, you feel a lot more comfortable now. So, yeah, it was good. Still smiles, mate. Still amazing experience. Um, yesterday, I was nervous. Yesterday, I definitely uh, mixed emotions due to being the first session of my AFC debut. Still, bro. This morning, I was more focused on getting to the spot because I definitely anticipated a quick bite. I don't know if Dean's noticed the last two days. I always let him have the first cast. He's a veteran. I let him go in there. And I trust my gut. And this morning, I knew Dean was going to be on this morning. It was no surprise to me when he clicked his bar arm over and went, Yep, he was on. Come on, on the wrong side of a tree. Quick, drive me. Yep, got it. First cast, I pictured where I wanted to put it. There's a nice white tree covered in shag stuff, and um, I didn't notice a little offshoot branch. Just as it's flying through the air, I just saw the branch, and I'm like, oh no. Clicked it into gear, lure fell on the back side of the branch, and it's on. Start the output. As we drove the boat in there, we hit a tree, and we're stuck on the tree. Go, 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 go! I'm screaming at him. So he starts the outboard and guns it and we go up over this log. Right up, turn it off. Once we got over the tree, we uh, turned the outboard off and then we took charge on the Alecki. In the meantime, my left hand's calm, but my whole brain and everything's like, we've got to get over there. I can see this thing just rolling around on the top. Take me like over there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Straight to the tree, straight to the tree. Once we got to the fish, I still didn't know how he was going to do it. I was eager to watch. Right and um, just the way he manoeuvred the line, he knew which way the fish had gone in the snag. Wait, stop, 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 stop driving. He then reversed that fish, didn't go too hard on it, got the fish out, got it to the net, and it was a, our big fish straight up in the first minute. There's one coming. Oh, he oh, ate that thing. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a beast. <laughs> Jeez, he choked it. That was hectic. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Well. Right now, I'd say that was a rookie mistake. I was going to say. And I did it. <laughs> he made a bit of a joke about it. He said, yeah, oh, I'm a bit of a rookie this morning. But it looked like a bit of a rookie move, but it was actually really advanced angling. Like, it, it was pretty impressive, to be honest. I, myself, in that situation, I probably would have panicked. However, he was just cool, calm, clean. He knew what had to happen. So one bloke's going to lose the fish, and Dean Sylvester's going to get the fish. Oh. <laughs> <Whew>. Number one. <laughs> We're all excited, yes, this is going to be good. 
I literally picked it up, clicked it in the gear, cast out, can not count to three, and nearly exactly the same thing, but in clear water. So it was on again. Yep. Climbed straight on again. I went, oh, right, I'll oh, crank mine in, got it out the way, straight back on the net. You happy with the boogies? Yep. So Liam grabbed the net. You said you're right with the boat position. I said, no, no, we're cool this time. Good work, mate. You could tell he was so in tune this morning. He was very focused. He's a, such a fierce competitor. He didn't like coming off second best, as neither did I yesterday, and rightly so. Oh, there you go. Oh, I fell off. <laughs> also, I hope you you keep fishing. Yeah, this all happened so quick, and that's why I wanted to take charge of the fish, because I know how efficient he is. He gets the fish in, and he's straight back into those casts. He's very good at time management and efficiency, so oh, literally, as I'm measuring the fish, getting the clipboard to write it down, yep. clunk, he's on again. As soon as he hit the water, I clicked in the gear and I'm like, uh-oh. You see this big black thing just start writhing around on the top and I'm like, oh my god. No, it certainly didn't stop there. Um, obviously, it looks like it's a one-man team at the moment, but when a bloke's that in tune with the system, you don't want to get in the way because it's going to jeopardise a team event. Sorry, man. Yep. 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 By virtue of me just netting the fish, taking charge of the fish and measuring the fish, it just allows him to freely fish and effectively help Team BCF to try and secure a victory in this round. Yep. Told you. I'll leave the clipboard out. The bloke just had a hat trick, so again, right on cue, as he does, clunk. Yep, he knew it too. We were pretty pumped this morning, it was really good energy. This is exactly how I wanted the morning to row, you know. It's any tournament, that's, that's a dream start. It doesn't matter about the size. You want the day to build with confidence that you're doing the right thing in the right area. It's a better fish. Yeah. Oh, look at how fat it is. Yeah. <laughs> As the Mark Crompton of the Sony department. When Dean and myself spoke last night, we went, if we could go in there, get that limit early, has four. Fish with confidence and momentum for the rest of the day, things will pan out and we've got a red hot crack at getting back that one point that Hobie took from us yesterday. We have a limit. We do. Well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> the win was, um, it was a massive feeling of satisfaction. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I felt like we got to the level of everything that I've always fished tournaments for. We proved to ourselves that we were able to do it and mix it with the best and beat them. Mark got that first fish and then it got pretty quiet after that. We went up to another spot and Mark threw this lure in and oh, yep. busted him off pretty quick. Pretty much just roasted me straight away. It just annihilated me. I was running too light. From that bay, we went up the river a little bit, and I think we might have lost a couple in the meantime again. Yep. I think uh, Steve busted one off as well. Yep. Oh. yep. There's no worse feeling. You know you need to catch your bag limit of fish, and if you're losing them, it hurts. That's not very nice. you got to try and shake it off, but sometimes it's really tough just to refocus and, and get back onto the task. There he is. Oh. Running close to the tree. Could be a little guy, could be bait fish or something. Oh, they could be uh, bonies. Oh, no, that's not a bony. Oh, he counts. It's, good. it's a fish. <laughs> Mark ended up catching this tiny little guy. It's only just 30 centimetres. So that's what, well, that's another one, but you know, it's pretty small. We've got to get rid of him at the end of the day. We knew we didn't want that little guy in the bag, but we knew we still had hours to go to catch those last two fish, uh, hopefully upgrade those little fish. We had a plan at the start, like pie in the sky stuff. We thought if we can go and catch a bigger bag than what we caught yesterday quick, we want to use that window for a surface bite for Barra. It's a four round event and so far, all of our stuff has come from the same spot, so you don't want to burn it. Because if you're catching fish that aren't an upgrade, they're wasted for the next couple of rounds. So it was all hot and fast at the start, but then we stopped catching fish too, which the spirits start to sort of waver away. 
we when we tried for some barramundi, which is completely new to me. That was the first time I've actually flicked for barramundi in my life. Um, oh, massive amount of anticipation, hoping to get that big sort of oil on the top water. But um, Dean wasn't feeling it, so then we went back and we went looking for uh, new sort of areas, trying to match the area and the pattern that we had found to other areas in the lake itself. This is where Rookie got dusted yesterday. So he's come back for revenge. It wasn't too much of a hit to us that we didn't get the barra bite because we still had plenty of time to try and get the bigger sooty. So we went to a spot that we did find sooties yesterday. Um, got the gulp in, hop, hop, and then it went crunch. Yep. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Hopefully. Yeah, Nothing. it's long. Getting it in felt really good. Finally contributed to the bag and that got that average above the 40 mark, which is exactly what we're after. Face to face with the city and didn't get me today. <laughs> How do you feel? 100% he's got this time. <laughs> <laughs> we let him go. Beautiful thing, look, he's puffed. He took on the rookie and he lost. River a little bit. That was our plan. From the get -go. Yeah, we definitely decided today we we're going to run and gun a bit more. So running and gunning, obviously, you're uh, peppering your spots, hitting them hard, fast, and then moving on to the next one relatively quick so you can uh, really capitalise on your time. OK, let's move. Let's go up, we need to concentrate on those birds. We basically went around to uh, the eastern side and as soon as we found those birds we knew we were, we were in a, a good zone. Yup. That second one, remember? He's out, I think. Keep him calm. Keep him calm. Keep him calm. <laughs> the yeah. circle work. Little one. I don't know, it's almost like an intuition. You just know that it's going to be a good fish. <laughs> Been fishing long? As soon as you see the silver side, you can tell that it's, uh, it's a good one. A little footy. Little football. We've been synchronising our cast most of the time. If we get a big enough piece of structure, one will cast left, one will cast right. Find if you cast at the same time and the lures sink at the same time, it doesn't spook the fish. You haven't got one lure going down where the fish follow it down, and then if you throw another one, they're going to look up, so they sort of get confused. So we've been trying to work together and keep lures in the water. Oh, yes. He's got me in timber. Hey? He's got me. Got you? Want to yep. go over? Yes, yes, yes. Stay in hook. Come on, fish. Bugger. It's all right. Chill. Good fish too. Probably just should have opened the bar line that point. There he goes. Log. That was a good fish. Mark, Mark. Hey, Mark. Timber anywhere down there. We had a bit of mayhem, so I tried to grab the electric motor and pull that out of the way. Sorry. And uh, managed to get that 
out and, and clicked it into place. So that was a bit crazy. It didn't feel big, but it has to stay deep. Nice oh, fish, mate. Okay, that's a bag. Need to work for that. Jesus. We've got a bag. We've got one point that we need. We just we kept moving. We had to find a, an upgrade that we really, really needed. We caught better fish than we did the day before, but we're still short of what we got beaten by the day before. So we went looking for other similar spots, which cost us sort of a lot of time scouting, but we've got to think of the long term. So if you've got a reasonable bag, you've got to look at what you can do in the next few sessions. That fishing as the day goes on, it's going to get a bit slower. As the sun gets up, as you saw yesterday, we're going to have to work our lures deeper to the base of the trees and leave it in their face a bit longer from the canoe. Yep. Good fish man. It was heavy and we were fairly excited because we went through a fair dry spell up into this fish. Come on, tie her out. Don't do that. It stayed deep, had a few runs in. We got it up to the surface. Watch the electric. Yep, you're up. Massive amount of anticipation thinking this is the kicker that we've been searching for all day. This fish was just about as wide as it was long. It was the fattest fish I've ever seen. And it's just unfortunate that he missed the tall gene in his family because he was so thick. But if it was on weight, I'd be pumped, but it's on length, so it didn't help. where we just hit a quiet patch. Nothing happened for a couple of hours. I don't know if it was the sun that came up. The temperature definitely got hot and still. We just moved from zone to zone. We went back to the homestead spot. We went back up river. Went back to where we kept losing fish. Still nothing. Things got quiet. Just tried keeping each other confident, keeping them, making sure we got those casts in the right spot were important. Yeah. And then worry about whether we are getting the bites or not. I might get the net. Get the net! It was a good feeling just to get an upgrade and think, you know, all right, sweet. There we go. So definitely, definitely upgrade that little one. There's only a four centimetre upgrade. It's not much, but every centimetre counts. I've always told myself. <laughs> There's a lot of time we didn't catch fish, but because you're scouting, you're not dwelling on what you've got and what we should be catching. You're sort of thinking, right, oh, we're now looking for tomorrow. It wasn't until sort of the last half an hour or so where you think, like, what are we going to do now? Like, we don't feel like we've got enough. Got one. Yes. You definitely can't win a tournament off the first round, but you can definitely set yourself up to lose. So from the first round being so close, the decision on this round then puts pressure on the third round because you need to win it. Good fish, man. And then the final round, we get to choose where we want to go. And with how hard Young has been fishing. That'd be close. If it's been hard here, is it hard everywhere else? And is it more consistent to just stay here and grind out what we know, or should we just go and shoot for the fences and catch bar money? But if you're close, then you've got to make a smart decision and probably chase sooties. So yeah, a new format this series, we actually get to choose our arena in uh, round four. We've got a uh, choice of three systems, uh, Timbra, Kitchen or Youngler. And uh, we need to make a decision on where we're going to go to get a bag of a mixed yep, species yep, yep, four yep, fish. Yep, 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 we yep, can have yep. four oh. sooties, we can have four barra, we can have four whatever. But they need to be the longest four that we can possibly put together. Give it a shot, man. Well done, mate. Yeah, we need to decide by the end of this round what we're going to do. At least we get to find out the points before we make that decision. <laughs> Here are the results for AFC Round 2 at Yungala Dam. Team Hobie caught five fish for a bag length of 167 centimetres with a big fish of 47 centimetres. Team BCF landed seven fish for a bag length of 180 centimetres with a big fish of 49 centimetres. Yes! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you. That's fine. <clears throat> Congrats. This gives Team Hobie one point for the round, 
and BCF four points. At the conclusion of round two, both teams have to nominate their fishing location for the fourth and final round. Oh, it's tomorrow though. Team BCF choose risk reward. You tell them. Team Ra. <laughs> Targeting Barra. And Team Hobie choose to remain at Yungala Dam. We're going to stay local and been here enough days that we kind of had a, have a, an idea of this dam instead of going to a different system where we have absolutely no idea at all. Next time on AFC, reigning champions Team Hobie find themselves behind for the first time. Yep, yep, yep. They must now launch a new offensive as Team BCF attempts to stretch their lead. Get us in there, get us in there. Get us in there. Thank God.